I don't actually know where my phone is. Hey Google, find my phone. All right, your Pixel 5 should be ringing now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just scared my boyfriend really badly. That's hilarious. Oh no. Oops. Hi, it's Tilly, and for part two of our Halloween 2021 Inspiration Month, I'm making myself into a ghost. Ooh, spooky. Quick reminder for those of you who haven't seen part one of this series with Wednesday Adams, the goal is to get some spooky outfits going without having to custom make everything. I particularly love this costume because she's inspired by the Haunted Mansion ghosts and parade characters at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. The parade is super fun, and if you haven't had a chance to see it, there are a lot of great recordings on YouTube. But for now, let's get started. For the design, the only real limitation we have is our color palette. It's primarily white or gray, and we want something flowy or big for the skirt support. For this one, I was actually fairly limited because I don't really wear the color white often. The only blouse type shirt I had was my pirate shirt. So I started with that and my hoop skirt. From there, I added my Mary Poppins Victorian inspired boots, although any white boot or shoe would work. And a white wig to be extra ghost-like. In order to break up all the white and provide a more defined waist, I added a skull scarf around my waist. Last, in order to reduce the amount of paint I'd have to use, I purchased a white unitard with gloved hands. So I'm going to use Ben Nye color cups and start by going in with the white. And first, uh, white's really hard because it's very, it's very transparent. It's not very opaque. And so you'll want to first spread the color and then pat it down to be able to get a more even white tone base. And I've mentioned this before in some of my cat's videos, but to make sure that you have a solid white base, you can actually use your phone as a pretty good test of how it'll show up on camera and if there are any patches or splotchiness to your white base. Great, so with the white base done, I'm going to start to do just some kind of some normal contouring around the face to make it look more sunken. So I'm going to go in with a light gray color. I'm going to do this around the forehead, underneath the cheekbones, maybe a little bit at the jawline and down the side of the nose. And you can always go light and then build the color in. And then once I've placed some of that color, I'm going to go back in with my white sponge and help just blend that out. Next, I'm just going to take a little bit of purple and put that right at kind of the darker spots of where I'd want the color to be. And then I'm going to take my sponge and blend that into the gray. I don't want to give her a blush because that looks alive and it is literally the color in your face. I'm going to try and use a little bit of silver to kind of give a little bit more of a color without it being a lively color. But I'm only going to take a very small amount because this shows up pretty starkly. And for our kind of more highlight, I'm actually going to take this white powder and just pop it into the places. That would be a true highlight. So I'm going to place that down the center of the nose, middle of the forehead, along the upper cheekbones. Okay, so next I need to set my eyes with the powder because they're starting to crack. So first I'm just going to blend that before I use 
I'm going to use this sparkly white. Just go ahead and pop that all over the lid up to the eyebrow. Next, I'm going to use this like matte purple. That's kind of a dusty purple and put that in the outer half of the eyelid. The nice thing about ghosts is the makeup does not need to be perfectly blended or look even the slightly messier, the better really. Next, I'm going to use Copper Plate from MAC, which is this nice gray color. And just blend that in kind of the outer corner and then in the crease. And then I'm going to take this black and really darken that further at the very outer crease and into the eye socket. I really like kind of the touch of purple that I have, so I'm actually going to take this MAC pigment in violet and place that over the makeup I've done in the inner corner to give it a bit more of a punch. Just be careful of any fallout that's going to land on your white. Yeah, I like that. Great, I'm going to also add that a little bit in the rest of the face. And then I'm taking whatever's left over of the purple in my brush and just brushing that over my eyebrows to add a little bit of color back in, just slightly. From there, I'm going to use a black eyeliner. Okay, next we'll put on some mascara. I've never actually used this color but I kind of want to try it. So this color is actually screen, bru uh, Brucey, sorry. It's called Brucey. It's um, Sophia Nygaard's collab with ColourPop. And it's kind of like this gray, dark gray blue. It might be a little too dark for our look. But I also don't know when else I'd use this color. So what I might do is then take a little bit of the violet and pop that onto a brush and just in the very center of the mouth add some of that purple hue and I think it's going to match a bit better. Great! I think I'm really happy with this makeup overall so let's go ahead and grab the wig! With this purple, I look a little bit like Ursula. I probably should have taken off this shirt first. Hmm. I tried to do a bun updo inspired by the Gibson girl with a poofy crown and a bun, and apparently decided to make it a challenge by styling it with my gloves on. And now for the reveal. Overall, I would say I really liked how she turned out. A few lessons or things that I might change. You could use a colored wig or your own hair and use baby powder or dry shampoo to make it look more ghostly. If you are styling your hair or a wig, I recommend doing it before you put on the unitard. The gloved hands made styling way more difficult than it needed to be. You can skip the unitard altogether for more makeup or a high collared shirt with white gloves instead. I didn't love my pirate shirt with this outfit because it kept slipping up the unitard, which I feel like would get really annoying. The crinkled crinoline helps appear more ghost-like. I had mine just shoved in a trash bag for storage and it ended up looking great. 
Last, I really liked my skull sash, but you could use any color, especially dusty colors, to add more depth to the white. And then you could also use that creatively in your makeup. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this Halloween inspiration. Please like and subscribe for more fun Halloween and costume content. You can also find me on my socials at Tilly Boom Cosplay. We'll see you next time. Although I guess if I've scared my boyfriend, I'm already doing a good job of becoming a scary ghost.